Welcome back learners of English. These videos are designed to help with your listening comprehension and start understanding native content perfectly. So we're going to listen, review and check everything that was said. Today's topic is about booking flights and your warm up question. Which of these can you hear? Let's take a listen. Do not look at those subtitles. I've asked you enough times already. Can we just sit down now and book these flights? We've kept an eye on them for months and we know they're not going to get any cheaper. If anything, they may go up. If we leave it till the last minute, we might be scrambling and have to book some horrible flight instead. Remember two years ago, we had a long connection and we had to change airports. It wasn't even cheap. I'd rather just book this one now and then it's done. We know the dates we want. So why do you always have to drag your feet? Okay, so she said, that was my mum, thank you mum, she said to keep an eye on. Don't worry if you're not sure how that's used, we'll go through it in a second along with everything else. But these are the comprehension checking questions, we will go through these at the end, but pause now if you want to take a quick look. Now let's get into the review of the whole speech, that's the colour code. She said, I've asked you enough times already. Can we just sit down now and book these flights? We've kept an eye on them for months. There it is right there. So to keep an eye on something or someone means to watch it continually or to watch them continually over a period of time, staying alert, making sure nothing suspicious happens or nothing changes. Please keep an eye on my boy until I get back. So please make sure he doesn't try to run away or anything like that. I always keep an eye on the portion sizes. So in this example, maybe someone gets their coffee at Starbucks, they're keeping an eye on the size of the cups. If they start making them smaller, then I'm gonna stop buying them. So for a long time now, we've been keeping an eye, we've been checking these flights, and we know that the flight prices are not going to get any cheaper. If anything, they may go up, they may go up in price. If we leave it till the last minute, we might be scrambling and have to book some horrible flight instead. Scrambling, I could only think of just saying not an egg. It's a different kind of scramble. I don't know what else people scramble, but this kind of scramble means to be in a panic, in a hurry. She scrambles to find her car keys every morning. That's my wife right there. It's okay, she doesn't watch these videos. You can also say to be in a mad rush or in a mad panic. So we might be in a rush to book some horrible flight instead if we don't book these flights now, if we don't sit down and book them. Second page, remember two years ago, so now she's talking about a, a past event. We had a long connection, like a flight connection, and had to change airports. That's a really bad connection. For example, London has different airports, Gatwick and Heathrow, they had to travel between the two airports and change flights. It wasn't even cheap. So even though it was a terrible flight connection, it wasn't cheap either. I'd rather just book this one now and then it's done. Saying it's done, it's, it's finished, we don't need to worry about it anymore. We know the dates we want. So why do you always have to drag your feet? It's quite an odd expression, dragging your feet. If you imagine someone walking behind you, dragging their feet, has this idea that they are taking longer than necessary to do a task. It's the best way I could describe it, usually because they don't want to do it. He was dragging his feet. I could tell he didn't really want to go. You can also say it was a drag if it was something boring that you didn't want to do, it made you drag your own feet. So she's asking the person she's talking to, why do you always have to drag your feet? All right, so back to these questions. What is the speaker trying to avoid? Well, when she was talking about the past event, I'm getting the idea she doesn't want this to happen again. So what was wrong last time? It was not even cheap. She also said, can we book these flights now? She's talking about the price, not going up, not going down. So also the long connection. So the answer here, she's trying to avoid overpriced flights with bad connections. That's putting it all together. Is the listener unsure of the flight dates? The listener, the person she's talking to. Well, near the end, she said, 
we know the dates we want. So why do you always have to drag your feet? So that's not the reason why he's dragging his feet, or at least that's the point she's making. So no, they both know the desired date. And finally, is the speaker blaming the listener for booking horrible flights last time? Is there a clear answer here or do we just have to kind of guess? Let's look for some clues. So she started by saying, I've asked you enough times already. That's a bit of a clue. And then later saying, remember two years ago, this has happened before. And then she added, why do you always have to drag your feet? I'm getting the impression here that maybe the last time this happened, the last time they tried to book flights, maybe it was because he was dragging his feet before. So she didn't exactly say it was your fault last time. She didn't say those words, but she did imply that they've done this before and maybe it's gonna cause the problem again, but not an easy question there. And hey, let me ask you, are you done with studying for today?